we lose some fat, we lose leptin because remember, fat produces leptin. Leptin is a hormone that binds with our brain and tells us we're full, we're satiated, all is good in the world. And so when we lose some fat, we lose an amount of leptin and our brains overreact to that. And there's a caloric penalty as well. Our bodies start to change. They start to get very good at making more fat. Our metabolism actually changes once we lose some fat where we get very efficient at storing fat. So somebody who's lost, you know, say 10, 20% of, of their body weight will have to eat 22% fewer calories compared to someone who's never had to lose weight to be at their weight and never gained the weight and came back, right? So there's a caloric penalty to getting heavier and losing it. And it lasts a long time. Hi guys, it's Miri and today I'm going to explain to you why the starvation mode is not a myth. Quite a few people have been writing articles in the last years about that starvation mode is a myth. It makes people believe that there is no such thing as a starvation mode, but there is and it all just depends on how you define it. And I just want to explain what exactly that is. So if you have ever been confused I just want to bring understanding to what this all means. Mostly I'm going to uh, quote from an article from a aworkoutroutine.com and in this article Jay is separating the starvation mode from all of these other terms which are starvation response, metabolic slowdown, metabolic adaptation, metabolic damage. Uh, his biggest argument is that uh, most people that stop losing weight they just stop losing weight because they're not in a calorie deficit anymore but they think they are but they're not so that's what's happening at not starvation mode but the thing is the one doesn't exclude the other these people aren't in a calorie deficit anymore because starvation mode is playing a role yes so in general i agree that you cannot lose weight without a calorie deficit but the thing is that most of these articles leave out everything beyond the weight loss but like, what about your health? What about your hormones? What about all of this stuff? What about your bones, your joints, your hair, your skin, your digestion, your immune system, your libido, your everything? Imagine for a second, if you had the choice between losing weight, but also losing all of that, what I just mentioned, and losing weight and not losing all of that that I just mentioned, what would you choose? I mean, it's obvious. You would like to have both. You also at the same time want to keep all of your body's functions on an ideal level and not lose any of your health so that's what you want and that is why it's so important to recognize that starvation mode is in fact real and it should not be brushed off by oh just it doesn't exist and it's a myth all of these terms metabolic slowdown adaptive thermogenesis metabolic adaptation starvation mode metabolic damage starvation response they are all part of the metabolic processes that take place when you're in a prolonged calorie deficit. And the bigger the calorie deficit, the more severe these processes of adaptations are going to be. But you also can do like a very small calorie deficit over years and years and years, which was the case with me. And many people argue that like a very small deficit is not going to do anything um, metabolically. It's not going to have any disadvantages but it had very severe disadvantages for me and I think it's just a very individual thing. I just want to raise awareness that all of these things are real. Some of them might be like misnomers, like it, it might be a really um, maybe not so suitable term for what's happening. For example, metabolic damage or broken metabolism. That's not really what is happening. Like nothing is broken, nothing is damaged, but it's just, a form of adaptation and just that term to describe that phenomenon is not really nicely chosen so but um, in the end everything of that is real and it just means that your metabolism is shutting down its functions in order to save energy for metabolic slowdown there are several ways that the body burns calories and all of them decrease when you restrict calories for a long time your BMR decreases, your TEA decreases, your TEF, your NEAT, and yeah, adaptive thermogenesis occurs. Weight loss and reduced calorie intake lead to reduced burning of calories, obviously because you're losing weight, but that's not only because you weigh less, hence you burn less, but due to metabolic adaptation and metabolic 
responses. So many people argue that to maintain your metabolic rate, you just lift weights. Like while you're losing weight, while you're eating a calorie deficit, however, they might maintain their rate of calories burned, but they'll still lose their hormonal, digestive and immune balance. Just because you're maintaining your metabolic rate and the amount of calories you need per day, doesn't mean it's a healthy weight loss. What's crucial is whether your body has sufficient calories coming in to provide for all of its functions to run on peak, be it with or without metabolically beneficial lifting. In the end, it, it's not about how many calories your body burns, but if your body, all in all, has all the energy to function optimally, and that goes far beyond any weight loss. Like if it has to prioritize fat storage and survival and you know all of the essential vital functions then of course it's not going to have enough energy to run all the other functions that you do want to have for example keeping up your hormones you need your hormones to actually keep your weight off long term to naturally to stay at your natural set point the loss of these hormones like i'm, I'm talking all hormones is the reason why people can't keep off that weight long term once they lost weight In today's time, where everyone is doing like a calorie deficit thing, like it seems, we really need to emphasize and get to terms with what we are sacrificing for the weight loss. There is a healthy way to lose weight, and I did a video uh, just before this video. Like, the goal is to lose weight on a high metabolism. That while losing weight, like all the way through, you are maintaining all of the good stuff that we were talking about. And um, that's how there won't be any weight regain after you lost weight. Adaptive thermogenesis and metabolic adaptation. That's the extra amount of slowdown because your body views all of this as you potentially being in danger of starving to death. And that is a real thing that's not controversial. It has been proven time and time again. And now what many people do, many people say when people aren't losing fat, even though they eat super low calorie, thinking they are in a calorie deficit, but in reality they aren't. So basically eating too little prevents your body from losing weight. In some cases it might even cause it to gain weight. To get out of this state and start losing, you must eat more calories, not less. And truth is, for long-term weight loss, you actually want to eat more to lose weight. And I'm explaining that in this video linked here. But they argue if you were doing everything right and you were in a deficit, you'd currently be losing weight. And yes, that's right, but it's not because people are miscalculating or miscounting their calories. That's one factor that can happen. But also what's happening, like you, you cannot eat so few calories over a long time and still maintain your health. In order to maintain your health and your hormones and everything, you have to eat at maintenance, as it is called. And then when these people do that after a prolonged calorie deficit, their metabolism has adapted so much. Let's say before they needed like 2,500 calories and now with that metabolic adaptation their energy requirements actually went down to 1,500 calories and I know that people argue that it won't slow down that much but it's really just an individual thing and I know that when I had all of my health issues that I was eating 1,800 to 2,000 calories a day and no I wasn't miscalculating or miscounting my calories because believe me years of anorexia and like yeah it just I'm really good at it and it's not that I'm proud of that and now I'm just using it for my benefits and to eat enough calories um, I'm not counting calories anymore just a disclaimer uh, I'm just eyeballing my calories I basically just want to say I know that I didn't eat more most people who criticize starvation mode they would consider that really high like there's no way metabolic uh, responses would uh, cause that much of an adaptation um, when you're eating so many calories but like obviously it can. What can play a role here is that with a plant-based diet you don't absorb as many calories because there's so much fiber like you don't absorb them one-to-one -one. and also your dietary thermogenesis is so high that a lot of energy is actually burned by just digesting that food and that might be the reason why even though I was eating so many calories it was still far too high calorie deficit. Actually what it's about where starvation mode comes in and metabolic damage and all of that, all of the adaptation, is when you're at a calorie deficit on the too low spectrum. 
Like if you are on a calorie deficit, like for a small woman, for example, like me, while you're eating 2,500 to 3,000 calories, that is so much different and not going to cause any issues in comparison to being at a calorie deficit when you're eating 1,500 calories. That's such a huge difference because think of it, it's like 1,000 calories that your body still has to entertain nice to have functions that are not vital. Basically all hormones, they all regulate your body and they're all there for maintaining homeostasis in your body. And when you F these up, then you do have a problem long term. That's just how it is. And by not losing these and not getting these out of whack while you're losing weight, that is how you have healthy, sustainable, long-term weight loss. And that is where starvation mode will not come into play. So it's not so much about the size of the calorie deficit, but where on the spectrum of calorie amounts it is applied. The thing is, most people only ever notice like the horrendous effects of the starvation mode or like metabolic damage when they are finished with weight loss and then they're trying to yeah just maintain their weight the reason why most people regain the weight is because once people are going back to their new supposed maintenance with sufficient calories for the body's optimal ideal functioning and health they start gaining weight even more than before and that's because of that metabolic adaptation this is simply the body's natural physiological response to reduce calorie intake. What we often hear people say is that it isn't significant enough to cause weight gain. And the problem here is that the problem only arises once people have to eat again because they're losing their health, because they've been in such a prolonged calorie deficit that they already have health complications because of it. And then they have to eat again. I mean, as long as you're like eating almost nothing, of course, there's nothing for the body to store and to, you know, to prioritize fat storage from. But once you're aiming to eat a little bit more and your aim is to still stay in the calorie deficit, you know, but you, you also have to eat because your body is falling apart, basically, then that is where these effects of this metabolic adaptation really show. And the problem only arises once people have to eat again because they've been losing their health because of the prolonged calorie deficit and literal starvation mode they've been in and that's where like bottom line when you do this for weight loss and then you have these adaptations like how are you going to get out of this state again that's the question are you just losing weight or are you losing weight without losing your health and metabolism my issue with most of the people being against the starvation mode against the existence of it is that they don't talk about the holistic approach to weight loss where the weight doesn't come back in the fitness industry you have people saying well just eat to your maintenance how about just eating 1200 calories for the rest of your life that's not how it works because that's actually going to set you up for severe health complications you cannot do this all of these articles and so many fitness industry recommendations are just based on achieving and maintaining that weight loss the truth is the solution is never to just eat that little calories for the rest of your life just to keep off your weight no the solution is to maintain your weight eating enough calories for your body to maintain all its functions on ideal and optimal level that's the goal so you might now think well but how come anorexics don't stop losing weight how come the people from the minnesota starvation experiment they actually starved almost to death and they didn't stop losing weight eating that little calories and that's what I'm going to talk about in my next video because these are really, really often argued arguments. <laughs> I would really like to know what is your definition? Like what have you been thinking so far about starvation mode? What it is and what it isn't and all of these other things. Do you have your own experiences with it? Please don't forget to subscribe and like and comment down below. Also check out my Patreon page if you want to support my channel. So I'm going to say until my next video. It's going to be up Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday mornings, like kind of the spectrum. And I'm going to see you then. Bye bye.